This over here is Asus ProArt PZ13. One of the best on-the-go crate laptops that you can get. In fact, the only Snapdragon X Plus laptop for creators. That's kind of a tablet and on-the-go what you can do. But the question is, is the ARM platform actually best for creators if you want to have a setup like this? There is something from Minis Forum that is not on an ARM platform. This is the Minis Forum V3. It actually costs less than the Asus Pro Art PZ13. But which one is better? Should you buy it? And what are some of the other questions you have? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're going to find out. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with WhoKeys.com. And if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now we're greeted with some stickers and this gives away a little bit what's happening here. Ryzen AI, Minis Forum, AMD. It says Ryzen 7 8840U. It's black on the back. We've got two fan grill mounts. You can see there's a fan underneath there and underneath there. Little camera on the back there. You can see exhaust holes from the top. Let's see what else comes with it. Instruction manual. Oh, this is a nice power brick. Very, very small. So it looks like it's 65 watts power that can be delivered from this USB-C, which is absolutely insane. Look how small this is. Obviously, I'm in the UK and this won't be as good and it's going to make it a bit more bulkier, but very, very small. And a USB Type-C cable. Now, there is also a tempered glass screen protector. And obviously they have to produce this because this is not so widely available. But here it is. I'm not sure if we should install it straight away. I'm going to leave it. And then this is the keyboard combination that also goes for this. Okay, so very similar design as this Asus. So this goes on the back of the device. Okay, kind of folds half in the middle, except Asus doesn't have the grease cut out. They have the hinges out in here. So this should go on magnetically just like that over there. Looks like it's a little bit over the device. Not as good of a fit. But now the stand works. This is a very nice texture, like a bit grippy, a bit leathery, gray, fibery texture. I enjoy it. Okay. Attaches very good. This is a big downside for this. These maggots on the back there aren't very strong. So if I'm pushing this down, what happened just now is like it often comes, comes loose like that, which is they just need to strengthen the magnets a little bit. That is not as good. On Asus, I have literally never, this back has never come off. Like no matter how much I'm bending this, it is not coming off. Okay. I have to really pull this off the magnets. Look, I can hold the whole tablet through these magnets. Whereas this, look, it just comes off. This is, this is very loose. Not as strong magnets. This is much better. Look at that. Okay, let me set the PC up, get it all set, and then we'll compare them to. So then, it's been actually quite a while, and I've put both of these through their paces and actually tried both of them. The PZ13, I've tested for a long time, but I was able to actually test this V3 for a couple of weeks as well now, when doing the benchmarks and actually trying to do certain things. Firstly, I'd like to talk about the actual usability and kind of the overall design and features, because this is actually slightly bigger than our ProArt. You can see that the ProArt, is quite a bit smaller. I don't know if it still counts as a 13 inch tablet or something like that, but it is a smaller. The other thing I'd like to mention is the back panel and the way this works. So both of them have a camera in the back and you know, they're not particularly amazing, but it's just 
just in case you need to take pictures of something like documents or something like that, you can do that. Now, I really like this matte gray kind of a finish. It's got fiber inside and nice little Minis Forum logo in there. Now, let's take a look at the ports of both of these devices. On ProArt, we have a USB Type-C and that's USB 4. And then when I'm opening this little cover there, which makes it water resistant. It's got an SD card slot and another USB type four. So it's quite simple. There's two USB type C's, both of them USB four, and then one SD card slot. On the Minis Forum, it's got a little bit more going on. So you've got a V-Link. So basically this is a USB-C video input. So if you've got a Nintendo Switch, for example, and you wanna put the video into there and then actually play some games or show something on here, this, you can actually input video, which is a very great idea for a tablet. If you just want to use it as a screen, a secondary screen or something like that, you can do that with Minis Forum. I'm not sure if this is possible with the Pro app. Then underneath this rubber cover, we've got an SD card slot and then volume up and down buttons. Lastly, there is a headphone jack that we don't have on the Pro Art. On the right side, we've got volume rockers on the Pro Art, and then on the V3 Minis Forum, we've got a power and fingerprint sensor there, plus two USB Type C's, which are USB 4 and 40 gigabits per second. So for the ports, I've got to give it to the Minis Forum. Now let's take a look at the performance. The interesting thing is the PZ13 is an ARM processor because it's from Qualcomm and it's the Snapdragon X Plus chip. On this Minis Forum, it's the Ryzen 8840U CPU, which is actually x86 and we don't have any limitations. Now this is still a little bit of a test platform and a lot of the softwares don't you know, perform quite so well right now. There's no problem with the software support on the V3. Which one is actually better? Because the price difference is roughly around $100. Now, with the Minis Forum V3, you actually get double the RAM capacity, 32 gigabytes of 7,500 megatransfers per second compared to 16 gigabytes of 8,500 megahertz. First, what we're gonna be looking at is Cinebench R24. And this is what most of the people out there don't talk about, the battery versus plugged in performance. And the way I test always with my laptops is I wanna know what's the performance difference when you're plugged in and unplugged. And this is one of the best ways to find this out. So firstly, PZ13 and V3, single core, is slightly lower at 0.9% slower on the V3, but the multi-core is about 7.3% faster on the V3. Testing it for 10 minutes to see if they are gonna throttle, we can see that the V3 is still about 7.4% faster and makes the gap even bigger. And then in 30 minutes, both of the devices don't throttle more than what they do in 10 minutes. But now things get very interesting. When we're unplugging the cord, the V3 absolutely falls off the earth. Now the V3 is 56% slower in single core performance compared to the PZ13. And the multi-core score is now 12% slower than the PZ13, which means that the PZ13 has been designed, whether you plug in performance or on battery, it's pretty much exactly the same. Whereas on the V3, there's a huge performance difference whether you are plugged in or unplugged. And if you're looking at how much performance they're actually losing plugged in or unplugged, then as you can see, the PZ13 loses only 0.9% in single core performance when on battery, which basically means nothing. And in multi-core, we're losing only about 6%, which is also hardly measurable. Whereas the V3 drops 56% on single core performance and 23% in multi-core performance, which is absolutely insane. Moving on to Geekbench 6, the V3 is 4.7% faster in the single core score and about 6.4% slower in the multi-core score, which is interesting because now the rest of the benchmarks are all plugged in and I would have expected the V3 to be better at multi-core score, yet Geekbench really likes the Snapdragon and the way ARM works in there. In terms of iGPU, because both of them have integrated graphics and their SOCs, their system on the chip, so the RAM is actually working as VRAM as well, which is better for the PZ13 because it's running faster, but is more on the V3, if that makes sense. The V3 absolutely smokes 
the ProWatt is 180% faster in the OpenCL and 120% faster in the Vulcan scores, which is absolutely ridiculous. Let's take a look at Photoshop. And here you can see the V3 is 20% faster in the overall score and the same in general and filter score. And that is because ARM is not yet fully supported on Windows. Even though Adobe's got ARM for Mac OS, for Windows, there is no real support for the Qualcomm CPUs. For example, if you want to even download the Lightroom Classic, it's not available on the PZ13, whereas you can easily do that on the V3. So for photo editing, I gotta give it to the V3 as well. When it comes to video editing, oh my word, the V3 is so much better and is actually usable. The PZ13 is not usable at all. You can see extended score, obviously it doesn't complete at all. And the standard score is 68.2% faster on the V3. Some of these long GOP and intraframe scores are 160 and 195% faster. That just very clearly shows that the GPU and the hardware is not utilized on the PZ13 at all. Interestingly, the raw standard score is 43% slower on the V3, which shows that the CPU's performance is actually very, very good on this ARM. It's just not utilized well enough. And you can easily see that because even the latest Premiere Pro is not available on the ARM device. We're using Premiere Pro 23.69, whereas this one can use the latest Premiere Pro 25 which is ridiculous. In After Effects, this one just doesn't work, so there's no point in showing the benchmarks, whereas you can actually get some work done on the V3. The same with DaVinci Resolve. On V3, you can actually get some work done, whereas in here, it is pretty much unusable. So for video editing, I've got to give it to the V3 as well. Looking at the CPU rendering in Blender, I gotta give it to the V3 as well because it doesn't quite work as well on the PZ13. The speedometer, though, is faster on the PZ13, about 10% slower on the V3, which just shows that programs that are utilized, like Google Chrome, is utilizing all of the CPU power and the new architecture is very, very fast. Whereas some of these create applications aren't yet supported on there. As you can see, in terms of performance, the V3 is a lot better than the PZ13 for now. There is one big elephant in the room, which is the battery life. Now the battery life is a lot better on the ProArt PZ13, it just lasts so much longer. This guy here is measurably lower in terms of battery life performance than the PZ13. Now it's not bad because Zen 4 architecture on the Ryzen is very, very power efficient, but it's no match to the ARM um, what we get here on the PZ13. Now, another thing I wanna mention is the power bank. Mini's forum comes with this power bank, which is absolutely tiny. Now look at what Asus comes with. This 65 watts, both of them are 65 watts. This guy has just USB-C, so you can use it on this laptop or whatever other device you want. Whereas Asus one has this big long cord attached and you have to have this Mickey Mouse plug as well, which is so much bigger. In terms of portability, again, V3 puts the PZ13 in its place. This feels so much better quality than this guy here and Asus, I wish you would do something similar because this, if it's well branded, you could sell this separately as an accessory as well as the laptop charger. Have a 65 watt, maybe 100 watt charger as well. That's maybe this size. When we're talking about build quality, I've got to give this to the PZ13. When using the device, you know that the PZ13 is a much higher quality than the Minis Forum. I'm not saying that the Minis Forum is extremely bad quality, but when you put them head to head, it's clear that the PZ13 has much better quality. In a minute, we're going to test the speakers, but let's talk about the screens. Because the PZ13 is running OLED, whereas the V3 is an IPS panel. This one is 2560 by 1600 versus 2880 times 1800. So it's a smaller screen and bigger resolution. This one has much better pixels, much better colors than the V3. Now, some people like the matte display a bit more. I prefer the OLED and glossy. I don't mind the glossy. The OLED is so much nicer. This V3 is 165 Hertz. So whenever you're using this, it feels very, very snappy because the screen refreshes almost three times as fast as the ProArt, which is only 60 Hertz. Both of them 8-bit, 
touch screen so you can easily touch and play around which i'm a big fan of i like the touch capability more and more both of them support a pen asus comes with the pen whereas on the minis forum you'll have to buy them separately unfortunately both of the pens are using the microsoft pen protocol i don't know how many creators can actually use it or use that protocol when using the pen support when you look at the screens side by side the asus one is a much better quality because it is OLED. So the picture quality, I've got to give it to the Pro Art. Pro Art. Not so easily distinguishable which one is better. I've got to give it to the Pro Art because it's got a little bit more richer sound in terms of the low ends and high ends. The V3 goes a little bit louder, but the highs are very, very clear and maybe too clear. And then the bottom end kind of just falls off mid frequencies. <laughs> the PZ13 has a much even sound compared to the V3. V3 has no bottom end at all. Now, when we're looking at the trackpads, I've got to give the trackpad also to the Asus Pro Art. It is much nicer. It feels a better quality. The V3 has a hinge in the middle, so it can go all the way around because you can have a click on the top here as well and then on the bottom sides whereas on the asus pro art there's no click on the top just on the bottom which means that it kind of goes like that whereas on the v3 it goes kind of like that the pz13 is bigger trackpad and I like that one a lot more now in conclusion which one is better for you if you're looking for performance right now the V3 is a lot better bang for a buck right now because it performs better in pretty much every application you can throw at it the only downside is kind of falls you know off the chart when you are not plugged in the pz13 dot has a much better build quality better screen longer battery life the future of the pz13 is bright but i wouldn't buy a product for the future promise so right now is it worth spending extra hundred dollars to get the pz13 or get double the ram with the v3 from minutes forum let me know which one you would pick in the comment section below. If you want to pick up any of these laptops, the links are in the description below. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.